I'm telling you, controller players are going to be the best players. It's going to happen. I don't know when, but probably by next World Cup, controller players are going to be dominant. Then like, why not it, switch, bro? Because I, I don't want to <laughs> switch. I, I don't want to. I've never played on a controller in my entire life. Why would I switch? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to F Fantasia, the show about competitive Fortnite and the future. We're working on that tagline, but what we're not working on are the guests because they're here for today. And the hosts, me, myself, Shia Wager, joined by the beautiful and bodacious, smart, amazing Ball TW and the aggressive, reformed, also amazing, young calculator. How are you guys doing? Ball, I'll start off with you. How was your week? I like that I give you the opener of the show and it just sounds exactly like Hotline FN. <laughs> and then, yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing good, man. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and we're here with Calc. Um, well, before we get into Calc, uh, I just want to, you know, let you guys know that today, you know, it was a little bit of a mix up. I was going to have Savage in the beginning, um, but Savage does have an EU tournament. So that'll be happening next week, hopefully. But we have Calc. Calc, talk to me. Uh, how was your week so far and what, uh, you know, how did you get on the show today? What happened? Tell me that guys, process. So, you know, I went to bed at 6 a.m. yesterday, guys. Um, so I was, I was sleeping. I was having a beautiful sleep. And then I, at noon, I got uh, messages from Shia and Bala, and I'll read them word for word. Yo, we need a hero. Are you awake? The whole scene flopped. Fantasia's about to get canceled. We're in shambles. <laughs> we need a guest. I'll give you 1,500 V-Bucks. None of this happened. None of this happened. Yes, it did. None was, of that and happened. then Bala DM me and said, Calc, we need a hero. And then he DM me on Twitter again. He said, please, Calc, we need a guest. And I'm like, oh, well, thanks for waking me up because now I can actually, well, now I'm awake, so I can be on the show. Well, you have been begging to be on the show, so. Yeah, because it's going to be fun, but I just, they woke me up, guys. So they woke me up. They spammed my phone enough to where I woke up. So, yeah, I'm here. Nice. No. Well, third episode of Hotline, or Jesus Christ, <laughs> third episode, <laughs> third shit. episode, third episode of Fantasia. You know how it goes, dude. Literally, I'm just channeling all the energy all yes. the way from back when. It's an oof. Oh, it is what it man. is. Um, third episode. I just want to shout out all you guys who've been watching. If you're listening on audio, obviously you can watch our show on Spotify. Watching on Abala's channel, the VOD will be up on YouTube as well. Drop a like, subscribe. We need to do this um, because we need to pay rent and stuff. Honestly, I don't even think that's what it is. I'm trying to make jokes. It's also early for me. Two hours than what I thought the show would be live. So, um, you know, I'm in morning mode as well. It's all it's okay. good. Dude, um, I, it was already shambles. And I just let you host the show because it just can't get any more shambles than that. True, but true. <laughs> you're right. I mean, basically, we're just trying to drive engagement, get more people mm -hmm. watching, get more people interested in Comp Fortnite in general. So uh, make sure you follow the Twitter too. Twitter.com slash Aventasia podcast. And there you go. Let's nice. get in the show, shall we? Yeah, let's dive straight into a hot question or a hot topic. FNCS, one of the reasons the show also exists. Boys, uh, quick first thoughts, impressions of this weekend. Are we hype after it? Is the hype back? Or what's it looking like? Uh, Ball, I'll start with you. Yeah, last week it was like definitely a downswing in terms of hype, but this week it's back. Uh, I really, really had a good time watching uh, over the weekends. And I mean, some of that's due to the support that people have given me. But in general, I thought the games were really fun. I thought, you know, trios is re really, really fun as usual, and we're going to have a good season, I'm pretty sure. Nice. Calc, you played in the FNCS. What are your thoughts about week number one qualling? We'll get into the results in a bit, but overall, how are you feeling? So, okay, so Craggy has 20 whatever chest spawns. It, it has a lot of chest spawns compared to other PIs yes. sometimes. It has 100 floor spawns. Shall I have some trivia for you? How many shockwaves did we get from Craggy in 12 games? Three. Spawns? No, we only got one spawn in twelve games. Go, go fact check that. Go fact check it. One. <laughs> we got two shockwaves from Craggy the entire week. Okay, and that's a problem. That's a problem. You know that fifty percent chest spawn rate. That's a problem. Shall we got we got one spawn of shockwaves. We got a few bouncers. We got like maybe two crash pads. It, it, you don't even understand, Shiloh. The, the only way we could get shockwaves is if we rifted on dooms, we looted, mm -hmm. unlooted stuff, or the Stark team, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, we should go check Stark Vault. A spaz and five blue pumps. We get extra shockwaves <laughs> from Stark if we loot it, because they loot it so badly. They loot it, they loot it so bad. I don't even know if they need to loot it. Like, the amount I've... of times I've seen Stark leave 
without looting everything and just like being haphazard about it in like so many VOD reviews, it's just ridiculous. Um, so that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. But can you not do well without looting shockwaves? Uh, Shia, or not Shia, Bala, it's very hard. Very hard without shockwaves because when you, there's no play for height without shockwaves or, or crash pads or bouncers. There, you can't get height, especially with the Doom Bomb. If you get focused, you're, you're actually, you're screwed. Like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but like, oh, also spazzes. If you don't have spazzes, that's a huge disadvantage because you can just get two body shot to people with spazzes. We don't have time to upgrade at Craggy because every zone pulls max distance south. Thank God. Yeah. That's just so fun. I love it. <laughs> no, it, it actually answers like a bunch of my confusion because like, if you guys watch the main broadcast, you guys were like my prediction in terms of like doing really well in week number one, because like Craggy and contested, like you're big chilling. Um, but not having that rotation. Like, if you just watch scrims or you watch FNCS, you need the combo to be able to make it past half and half. You need it to be able to make it past, like, certain positions. So that clears that up. But on the topic of what you just said, the Mystical Bomb being disabled, Calc, um, is that going to switch a lot of things up for you guys in terms of, you know, being able to survive endgame? Because it's not going to be there for this weekend's FNCS. I feel like a lot of people are going to psycho hype because of that, so we're probably not going to play hype that much more than we did last week uh last week what really scared us though is surge because i know mm -hmm. that sounds crazy but we couldn't get surge and it's because every zone pulled max distance so if we so if if we got surge we'd be just shambles on everything else um it, it like surge ruined a lot of our games uh especially because we used to have a really good rotate for surge at craggy we still have a lot of like good places to get it from but now that they added a, a giant mountain and we have rifts, we don't get that much surge compared to what we used to get. We still get a lot of surge, but we died like three games in. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people had issues for whatever reason with surge this week. And I think it's because of the adapting to the to Stark Island in general. A lot of people are just basing up on the side, and, you know, causing troubles for you to try to find a spot. It's in the way for a lot of teams like the... Uh, Simi Stacks team, for example, they can fly on top of it. But if they don't do that, then they're also running into issues. Thankfully, all the Simi Stacks teams are fighting for whatever reason off spawn. Um, maybe because of its success last last season. But back to the bomb, that thing being gone is going to change some things. Because I, I don't know if, especially in EU. Um, in NA, there's still obviously like the, the gauntlets are a big part of stretch Zayt and Saf's way that they win and the other team that's lying their heart do or heart durant and taken too but like without the bomb all of a sudden there are teams who can play second height there are teams who can retake height without having to worry about getting focused by the bomb which was the biggest issue from that and there are teams that can now hold height without the bomb if it's in play or if dooms is in play you know yeah and um, it also is like these teams that are landing there now are they as incentivized to continue to going for a going for the vault right so mr savage benji lecce are they are they going to be more incentivized now to do that disengage strat that they did i think that that changes a lot and we'll have to see i think there's a tournament going on right now and then opens and stuff too agreed the only thing that i would note for that whole thing is um the fact that the gauntlets are still there and even though the bomb is something that really shuts down people who are like second height there is a possibility that things don't change too hard especially for na um, because I, I just from the majority of things that I watched, it was always like clicks or someone 46 stories all the way up in the air, raining down arcane gauntlet fire. Um, so it'll be cool to see. Obviously, there's going to be changes. Obviously, there's, you know, one whole RPG, not in the game, that has an infinite use with a cooldown. Um, we'll see the change there. <laughs> well, it's the really uh, by the way, <laughs> people don't realize what's good about it. It's the knockback. The knockback, the, explain. Uh, the bomb is like, it wastes a lot of mats, but it also does knockback. And it also does knock back three builds uh, sometimes, um, but it does knock back, and that's what's good about it because it'll fucking kill you instantly. Especially in const tight, constricted endgame zones, right? Yeah, it kills you instantly. I, I want you, you mentioned. I don't know why. It, oh, RPGs. You're talking about like the difference between RPGs, <laughs> but those are actually now back in comp 100. I don't think they were in arena before, but you can get them from sharks, and you could always get them from sharks at the beginning of the season, but. There's more teams now, like, just realizing that if there's a gold shark, it most likely has an RPG in it. <laughs> Did you guys see that clip? That was, like, the most ridiculous Snowbacks? thing I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Random RPG on height actually sounded like a war zone if you uh, <laughs> watch the clip uh, with your eyes closed. Um, before moving on, I just want to, like, 
ask one last thing about like the you know start of FNCS, um, and we'll get into it a little bit as well. Did it feel like a proper round three for you guys overall? Like we have a few more weeks to come. There's finals after that as well. Um, but what were the overall like round three feels? Did it feel like you know watching solos before or like squads before? Mm. Um, but Calc. Dude, I don't like the two-day format. The two-day format makes every game feel pointless. Like, what's the point of winning a game when it doesn't take you that much up in the standings at all? It feels so pointless. Like, well, why do we have a two-day format? Who wants that? Like, it, it's so pointless. We'll get into it. We'll get into the two-day. But Bala, feeling-wise, for for the first <laughs> week, like, did it feel like we were in round three? Yeah, I think so. I think we were. Okay. We, you know, we were playing customs. The games were intense. There was a. A consistent story to follow throughout round three on mm -hmm. on both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday was definitely a little bit less, but in NA East, I certainly felt those vibes. In EU, I didn't, just because I think I was just doing a lot of different things that I wasn't so focused on the fact that it was finals. Um, mm -hmm. But I still felt that. And day Sunday was really intense to me. Uh, but maybe that's just because I view it on a different lens than other people do. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's get into FNCS week one then. EU specifically. Now, Calc, I know you don't specifically or, or watch, you know, EU too, too hard, but we'll explain like the context of things. We can get your take on it. Um, for ZR Kha'Zix and Nate winning out of sweaty sands uncontested. Now, they might have the same thing as you, you know, maybe no shockwaves, um, no mobility. Uh, but these guys not only won everything, um, but they, they did it starting the day on Saturday and then ending the day as well all the way on Sunday. So, um, you know, thoughts on that, because that is actually really impressive and is being uncontested like that big of a deal. Because if I so, think at this then, point, like... yeah, we already, I think everybody already knows how important being uncontested is. There's not enough spawns on the map. There's not enough loot on the map. They need to add more places because being contested, you're never going to do good. So it, mm -hmm. it's basically a death sentence. If you're contested, you're not going to do good. It's just how that is. But like, Okay, say they also got like kind of cucked on shockwaves and crash pads. What was different between Kazakhs Nate and 4ZR and then you guys at Craggy Calc? Because like both uncontested, both coming from a god drop that has a lot of chests. Like what's going on there? They have better surge routes. True. Like okay. they do. one part about they... being shambles and it pulling all the way south is that it's you can't get surge sometimes and you'll get really shambles. And it's also not like we're perfect. We don't claim to be perfect. By the end of FNCS, we'll probably be really good, um, but we're we're always constantly improving, right? So, in past FNCS, is like in squads and in trios, we never really do that good in the weeks. We just try to constantly improve, try to find the meta before everybody else does. Like people think they know the meta, but they don't actually know the meta until it's over. They they definitely had easier routes, um, and they were pushing like far west away from zone many 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 times. And just full on engaging and, and ending up wiping teams in some cases. That's how they got not only surge, but they also it felt like they always had shockwaves in comparison mm -hmm. to what, what you're saying. It definitely felt that way. I don't know how, because in my mind the distance in terms of poles might be pretty similar. I think between sweaty and, and craggy. I guess if it goes south, sweaty is definitely easier. But they they had a clear plan and it was really good. I my only concern is when they do get contested. Next, this coming weekend, if Janice, Swiss, and Andalex end up coming back. Because those guys, they will fight, and they fought multiple times. And it felt like Swiss, Janice, and Andalex were actually the, the people who were doing better. Um, they did better in the Amar Cup. They did better in warm-up. In if, if I remember correctly, maybe I'm wrong on that. But in any case, like, I don't see that team doing well if they're contested still. And I don't think they've actually earned that spot yet. They have, like, an advantage on the fight, though, because these guys are now qualled four heats and i know janice Swiss and analex probably off consistency might be as well but if both these teams qual for a round three and we have one who literally has nothing to lose versus the other that's trying to set base up it's <laughs> it's over like it's done so it's literally 12 games of grief right like it's it's actually over for janice so um that that that's my take on that um but it, it all relates back to like like you know dude you just leave format, in that case but... no like you just straight up leave but then that's what I'm saying. Then Kazakhs, Nate, and 4ZR just don't have any issues. That's sweaty. Like, to me, that is just their spot now. Like, it's going to be so hard for any team that's not already qualified. I don't think we saw that. Like, we actually had that exact storyline in, in squads in EU with Mitro. Actually, very similar teams. Mitro, CR, Falcon, Lee, and Kinzel versus Andalex, Nate, um, and whatever, whatever. Like, all that 4ZR. They were part of that. 
and there was a, the week one Mitro and them didn't qual, and four ZR won, or whatever it might have been. I don't remember the exact details, but in any case, they left, qualified, and then in heats and grand finals they came back and fought, and it was shambles. Both teams failed. True, because well, I mean, you can't that's... because you don't win a spot, right? It, 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 the job's never done. Like, no matter what, we always have the egos to go back after it anyways. Unless, for some reason, you get lucky and the other team claims another spot. But uh, Drops are really, like, there's not enough. So people, that, that's the good thing about being on a established race because you have a spot, right? There's no other teams in NA who go craggy or Tier 1. But in EU, people care a lot less about that kind of stuff, especially because in EU, they grief each other even though they're friends. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it. Like, they'll purposefully grief their friends if they know it's their friends. It's the weirdest thing ever. I don't know how to explain it. EU is really weird. <laughs> I, I, I think that they also just compete. Like, they, they have that. I, I don't know. It is weird if you're comparing it to NA East, but I feel like the EU guys have better sense of a competitive drive rather than, you know, not contesting because they're the friends. Right, because they they are contesting because the spot is good. Contesting's just the other bad. Way contesting's bad. Sure, but the whole point of contesting is to get a spot, right? Like, why would these good teams be doing it anyways if it's just bad overall? Because egos. Right. But so that, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, there's no. I, I feel like EU is better in terms of like having no. What is it? Bias, I guess. No, it, no, because what you're describing in my mind sounds like freaking cheating. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Sounds like because they're friends, you don't want to go do something to it rather than that's the spot that I want. No, because you're friends, you don't want to grief each other's tournaments because that's fucking stupid. Like, why would you contest your friends knowing it's your friends and just knowing that contesting is bad in general? Like, we wanted to we wanted to fight Marzo W off Swan at Craggy and he and he left the spot for Misty and he 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 caught us off guard one game. Because we didn't know he's going to land there because we thought he gave it up and and he killed us one time because I threw. But besides that, he didn't land Craggy. And I don't know why he didn't land Craggy. But it, it, uh, contesting you off Swanchi isn't good. It's bad. We 100% agree with that. It's just the there's a process to get something uncontested, right? There, there's, ne there's never going to be a time where everybody's going uncontested because the map is just not big enough for that. So, like, are... It, Having that bias in my mind, oh, this this spot, we're not going there because my friends are landing there. That sounds wrong compared to EU where they're like, I want this spot, so let's go to this spot. Let's talk about that, though. Let's talk about what happens when someone actually has something uncontested. They're your friends, and then now you also can't get first and you're on a contested spot, right? Let's talk about NA East. So I'll start it off with Bucky Crew Kanata winning off everything. Slurpy Swamps, right? Mm. They're completely uncontested. I'm not sure how close you guys are, Calc, in general, but, you know, in that sense of being uncontested, even with Booga, Avery, Jamper, when I was watching, I was just wondering, how is everyone else okay with these guys having first, but also okay with, like, um, you know, everyone being uncontested? I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right, but it's like, you will not be able to win if there's certain spots on the map that are not getting contested, period, regardless of if it's your friends or not. Like, in a certain way, it's coming to say, but you need that, right? So it's, at least some other teams have a chance. Like, do you honestly think yourself, Calc, have a chance at winning from Craggy if Booga Avery Jamper get 12 games of Starks uncontested? No, but that doesn't really matter for us. Like, we know that some teams probably going to contest them, and if they don't, then we, who cares? Like, so be it. Like, hopefully some team who's fucking macroing goes and contests them and takes their leader game, so they die. <laughs> but... It's in a slippery, like, no good teams are going to contest them because it, it's just not, it, first of all, it ruins your practice. Second of all, it ruins your <laughs> tournament. And third, they're good teams. So fighting them is going to be very difficult. And there's no other tier one teams who really want to do that. So I don't know. Dude, I don't know. The way that NA East pros talk about all spawn makes me feel the game is broken, man. <laughs> How? 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 Because it's it's a situation where Booga Jamper and Avery are uncontested off spawn and it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to win because they're uncontested at the best spot. It's the way that trios. it works. It's the way that that POI I, I works. I know. And doesn't, isn't it freaking broken? If like, the POI was different and it wasn't a 50-50, I'm sure people would want to contest them. But it's a 
What about Slurpee so, then? So the, the you solution say it's a is foregone just... conclusion, but how how is it possible that they they land uh, Stark in Ninja Battles three times and they get last place? They got uncontested Ninja true. Battles, and it, it, it's a completely different true. tournament. But I mean, I don't know. Well, you have to see. But okay, that 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 gives me a little bit of you know uh, of hope of, of not hope, but a, a relief because you're right, right? You you still have to play the game. And the game isn't just early game. The game isn't just drop spots. Can I say something? The game is one. I'm sorry yeah, interrupting you. Your it, dep- it depends me. what you're going to no, say. Your chest is making <laughs> loose brain cells. They're saying that it's it's like not good for competitive integrity that you're deciding on where to land because of friends. You're not deciding on where you're landing because you're friends. You're deciding on where you're landing because you don't want to contest people because it ruins yeah. your it ruins your game. Like what yeah. what are you guys saying? It's not collusion. It's not ruining competitive integrity. I hope the competitive integrity of this game doesn't exist. I, this I game's agree awful. with that. I agree with the 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 fact that it's not what you're saying, but when you do frame it in ways like, oh, my friends are there, that, in my mind, is an issue, that NA East has significant... That wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about I... how in the, if, if you're in first... So, in a Daily Cup, in a Daily Cup, Benji and CRR in, on NA, before they were region locked, Benji and CRR pushed us because they knew it was us to kill us when they didn't have a chance of making money to grief our game. That's what he does. That's a different story. Okay. That's, that's a what he does. Story. <laughs> that's completely is, different. Is there something you want to say about like EU versus NA? Dude, EU sucks. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, people don't understand, but when when NA players watch EU's end games, they cringe because they do not understand basic stuff in end game. I don't know how to explain it to the fans, but when you watch EU, you always think, how is this a thing that exists because the, their meta in you is shock waving up and harpooning somebody off height and just to put it in perspective for you guys if the team on height is not a literal drone it, you're dead you're instantly dead and maybe it's because i have the two best aimers in the game on my team but if you're locked in the harpoon animation you're dead you're just dead i, I don't know how to explain. you're dead okay <laughs> i mean off that it's like I, I'm, I'm just like is that the only you say a meta difference but to me that just sounds like a one-off play like i feel like you and na relatively when we're watching trio end games plays the same na bar using gauntlets more eu bar using um uh the the ball more Shia. but like have you watched okay i watched yes a nos a nos trio cup highlights second place show do you, do you know something show they don't understand what's their end game they don't care they don't care what pieces are there's endgame. They don't care. They yes, learned they about do. they learned about dead side rotates through your fellow fucking Arabs inside the mind of an IGL. Did you not hear Benji talk about that? Are we just gonna like ignore that that's a thing that happened? Here's the thing though. The difference is that Benji can get by without knowing what dead side rotates are because he's such a freaking good. Because his region sucks. <laughs> that's why, Bala. I don't think so. I really don't think so because I see. Benji consistently coming over here and doing the same exact things on high ping. In even. cash cups, in cash no, cups. No, not in cash cups. In what? In, in many what? different formats. Like what? Like in what? many different like formats. What? Like what? In what? whatever elite cups, in ninja like battles, in cash cups, in ninja every battles. They ever he play. died off. What the fuck do you mean ninja battles? He didn't. He okay, got like buddy. he got bottom five. That doesn't matter. Like what, what I'm saying is, oh, I hello? still see him doing the things that he does. In their bag, he loses. <laughs> This is this is the bottom line for me, right? It's like, it's when you call someone say say, say you're playing a game and you call someone trash, but you're doing worse than that person. That's where I see NA coming from no. when they call EU trash personally. Because the fact is, even I if it's a cash cup, that. why is it even allowed? Why is it even allowed to come on the server in a cash cup? Where don't even fuck with me, Calc. People are trying. You can't say it's a fucking cash cup. People are trying. And he shits on Shut you guys up. in solos. Where, no, no. Let, let me finish, and you can go. In solos, where dead side rotates are even more important than they are in trios, and actually easier to do, and this guy doesn't know what they are, and he shits on the region, you're basically admitting the region is 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 like 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 is worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is that allowed? Shia, does Zayt play cash chips? Does Saf play cash chips? I don't care. I actually don't care. Dances I don't even think best they... players don't play cash chips. Best players, I, I I can't I can't call them the best players if they don't play those cash cups for that mode. You feel me? That there's other best players for a cash cup format who are getting trumped over by people from other regions. That's the thing. But that's the issue. It's not like it's not like cash cups are a direct like game. Nothing you do in your games affects people in, like on the leaderboards. 
Nothing you do affects them. Normally in tournaments, if you get height, you know, oh, p points are going to be low this game because I'm getting all the points. You know that, and you're going to be, I'm probably going to be in first for this game. In cash games, but that doesn't matter. It's it's just a different type of game. There's still gameplay being played. You can't just say that they don't count or they don't go towards an argument. Question. Regardless, yeah. Question. If, if any East pros actually have this idea, if you, Zex, and Mac have this idea, why aren't you over in EU winning their prize pool? We want to. We because want to. It, 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 there's a lot more to that than you think. Like, we looked into it. I, I, I know there's there a is. lot more to that. There is. We, we want to. You act, like, you act like NA pros don't want to move the EU. We really do. We looked into it. It's not something that we can do right now. But yep. depending on prize pool, we're, we're probably going to at some point. Like, we don't want to, we don't want to play in Good. NA. And you Good. think, in, no, EU is just, they, they're good at fighting. They're EU is probably better at solos than NA is, but they're just behind on a lot of the ideas that make Fortnite, like, super competitive. Like, I don't know how you look at the way EU plays Endgame and think that they're not behind NA. Like, they really are. I think there's 100% there's different styles and, and play styles entirely because of the way that EU is a large region, right? It's always, and, and the way that EU is always played more aggressively without the same styles that, that, you know, we in NA East have fostered and learned so much uh, because we have had, you know, high level scrims. We had had tournament, more tournaments in general um, prior to that. So it's like a difference, right? Everybody there is used to being, you know, no, heart, no bars hold just aggressive balls to the wall no matter what but when it comes to the actual like mechanics and fundamentals of winning an end game i don't see them being that far behind because the reality is that these high level concepts that you're talking about that apparently EU doesn't understand don't actually mean you're gonna win game you're gonna be winning tournaments yes right? they you can't do. just i don't think so they really because do. if they did okay like if you put right. an NA team, if you put a top ten NA team in EU, they would probably get top five or top three. I really they, like. Okay, EU's really good at fighting and they're good at solos, but they just don't understand the game. They just don't. They don't know anything. I swear. I I would contest to say that one of the best fundamentals in Endgame, which is split tarping, was more pushed by EU stomping and uh, stomping and shrinking during World Cup and. NA grabbed one of those fundamentals. There are things that different regions get better. I don't know. Anyways, there, there's Barf. one thing that we we're, that we we have in the outline. This is all completely off the cuff because of this <laughs> very very fascinating opinion. Um, and and so we can talk about a specific tactic is the Doom Gauntlet's usage. EU doesn't carry Doom's Gauntlet. Do you think that that's a big mistake, Calc? You just said it yourself. EU doesn't carry Doom's Gauntlet. Like, what do you, like, what else do you want me to say? Like, that's just the dumbest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, what? I, I I agree with that. I, obviously, the reason the Gauntlet is so good is that you can play anti-shockwave just beautiful. Like, without any care in the world, but... Well, that's not the only thing, but, you know, if a team edits on you and you have Gauntlets... You just shoot one gauntlet into their box and it hits all three or hits one or hits two. You can't get shot at because you'll do damage to them and they won't peek you. Why wouldn't you pick up gauntlets? I don't understand where they got this in their head that picking up a sniper or something like that's better than picking up gauntlets. It's so dumb. Like, how are you going to sit here and tell me that, you know, I actually think EU is pretty good, but they don't pick up gauntlets. <laughs> they don't pick up gauntlets. What do you mean? Well, it's... It's it's two teams. It's the only two teams that have access to it that don't that don't carry it, right? Mr. Savage, Benji, and Lecce, they don't carry it, um, and Aqua, No O'Reilly, and Reason don't carry it. But there's other regions too that aren't doing it. I, and to to me, the region that people are are watching for the most part is NA East for high level tactics. But they've all decided that they don't want to do that. It, it this is an obvious thing that you. It's not like they don't know. They watch NA East. They see Zay Saf and Stretch use gauntlets. And they realize the potential, but they still decide that it's not good or it's not good for them. I, I don't understand where that disconnect is. It's because they just have a tiny brain. E like, there's a reason why Zay picks up gauntlets. Gauntlets are very, very good. Like, there's no other way to spin it. There's nothing you can pick up over gauntlets that would be better. There's really nothing. I don't know why you're not picking up gauntlets if you land there. It's really dumb not to. Maybe it's because they think the bomb is enough. But the gauntlets are just a better thing to add to the combo. Like, you don't even have to use the gauntlets endgame. You, but 
keeping them on rotates and applying pressure to people and letting people know that Dooms is on height is really important. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't pick up the gauntlets. There's no reason not to. No, it's a good question. It opens my eyes to just, like, regional differences. And the fact that you might have a little bit of a fact that there are different types of metas, quantifying, though, who's better, who's not, is going to take a lot more than just us three with our opinions, right? We can, though, take this idea of cross regions, how the game's been growing, and look at some data that was released this week um, via FN comp data. I'm not sure if you can toss it on the screen, Robbie. But um, not only did it show us the growth in the amount of players, 500% growth specifically um, across, you know, the FNCS people playing. Some people are saying says of champs having different, um, you know, bar barriers to entry. For me, it gives me a good insight as to how each region actually looks in a player base. Um, so when it, when it comes to when it comes to that aspect, right? EU total players, NA total players, Brazil total players. Um, how does that really shake things up knowing that info? I don't think it shakes. I think we already kind of knew that this was the way that it was. Um, I, I'm more interested in the growth over anything in those regions specifically. Like Brazil went from, what, 7,000 players to more than NA East within a year. I don't know where that comes K, from. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where that comes from. Same, same thing with Middle East. Middle East has grown significantly since last season x where they where they just released that region so that that obviously makes a little bit more sense um but yeah i don't i don't think knowing these numbers changes anything we already knew eu was the biggest region and we knew that there was certain things that are the way that they are in eu because of it things like you know having more better players um all, all those things that we kind of go with storyline wise but i don't know if it changes my perception other than that does the player base get a little bit of a say into what region should be considered a major region then as a follow-up like shouldn't brazil be considered to have the same you know prize pools um the same amount of uh cup slash opportunities comparatively I, I don't to any east any west i don't think that the player base decides what whether you're a major region or not i think performance indicates that so i don't think we're going to have any changes in what we consider the major regions until we get back to some sort of international tournament unless Epic that doesn't happen gonna, in time i think epic's gonna with the way that they i don't i don't know if they decide like on the prize pools based of like how people play or how many people play but it also could have to do like how much money they're making from each region with v bucks and stuff like that because i know they're they're weird about that kind of thing but i i, I don't think brazil should be considered what, a major wait, region. what's weird about that i, I don't, think I don't it know makes I, sense I think right weird. i uh, I know that Brazil's the region that definitely grew the most. It's really popular. Mm -hmm. And my thing with Brazil, right, is I think they have a few good players. Like, every region every region has a few good players. Yep. But a majority of the player base is, is not as good as those players. I find a really nice way to say this. But, like, for example, Thome. Yeah, please okay? try. Thome, right? <laughs> Thome was... Thom was probably an average player on West, right? Can we can we get that out of here? So he's, he was an average player on West, and then he goes to Brazil, and he he plays on Brazil. He wins a few things. He's eighty six thousand followers on Twitter now, and on Twitch I think he's like three hundred thousand. What's your point? <laughs> Brazil is just a bad region. Like it's bad. They okay. have good players. Like Kings are really good players. It's probably a top ten player. Kings really good. But overall, the region just isn't good. It's not as good as other regions. And Top it's... 10 player for King, actually. Yes. I'm surprised to hear you say that. King's very good. I agree. I think King's very good. But it, that doesn't mean that everybody else in Brazil is good. I think it's only King and a few other players in Brazil. I don't, know, I don't really know where we're going with this, other than the fact that, yeah, there's definitely some... Even though they have a good player base, they're definitely not a major region. It's basically yes. what you're saying. They have, they yes. have good players. And, and I agree with that. That's where I'm my... Just... I don't think we're going to see a shift in what we consider... Major regions, whatever Epic thinks, obviously is different than what, what the community thinks, right? And maybe there'll be a shift in price pool towards Brazil because there's a bigger player base in the future or whatever, whatever. Um, I don't know if that's how it's done, but my thing is that until we get international tournaments back again, where we see Brazil players play with NA East, with EU, with NA West, with OCE, then we're not going to see a shift in what we think. My thing is just if you have a region that has more numbers in total. It is just so odd to give that region a less of a chance, even if the competitive, you know, um, drive is slightly smaller. It's just like, it's it's a prickly thing 
um to do even if it is the right thing um per personally speaking um I, I think that what you're the, the thing that you're missing is that we do have to reward the best players because that's what drives viewership that's what drives interest in general sure region-based stuff is important too like in league of legends for example most western fans don't give a crap about what's going on in the lpl the chinese teams but they do like give respect over to them because they're the best region but they're still mm -hmm. not watching them and that's that ends up in splits in what is important what what brings the most sponsors what brings the most money whatever whatever um our scene is different in the case because we don't have sponsors and whatnot but I think that's what you're getting at and the disconnect. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, to harp on that point, to lock onto it and push it further in terms of King, um, this man won 11 games out of 12 this past weekend in the FNCS. Calc, you just said that he's a top 10 player. Um, I think I've had the opposite opinion comparatively to everyone else um, just based off of these results. But would he be able to do this um, on another region? Like, let's just toss any East no, in the example. No, no way. No, you can You can Um, there, There's a lot of reasons why. Y you can't do that on a good region. And, you know, King's good. You don't win 11 games by being bad. But, I mean, does that mean he's the best player in the world? No, because you can't call somebody the best player in the world when they're winning 11 out of 12 games on their region in Fortnite. They, they are not the best player in the world. They're winning 11 games in the region. Maybe if he comes to NA and does it, obviously he's the best player in the world. Or he even does it, he's the best player in the world. But he's playing on Brazil right now, which is not as good as NA or EU. And he needs to come and prove himself in a different region. He did do good in World Cup, but that was a while ago. Um, so That's the thing, though, right? Like, does that does that have... Because every time I say validated? that type of opinion, does that validate it? Because he technically did come to a LAN event and perform. Okay, you know, well, song... people can say... It, it, it was solos or whatnot, but like he literally shit no, he didn't. on like some of the best players. So you forget, so you, so a lot of people forget this. And I watched World Cup back, right? So I, I remember mm -hmm. this. He didn't. If you watch his player feed, he he did well in two games and he died mid game or off spawn the other four. But he played the format, right? So he ended up getting fifth. He, like if you look at how he played, he wasn't even in the top 20. I, I, he might have been in the top 20, but he wasn't in the top 10 going into game six. If, if you look at that, he wasn't. So he did really well the last game. That's why he, did, he ended up doing so well. I think I think he was maybe in top ten or something. I, I'm not too sure. On yeah, the exact definitely numbers. top ten. He was. I don't, the I don't know. He was in 19. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He stayed at 19 okay. points for three games. Bala. Yeah, he, but that but, was 19 points was like up there in terms of. But but like any case, you, you're but right. Is, is it, there was definitely like, some differences in in what people actually remember from his performance. Yeah, it was and what actually happened. Yeah, Buga's was way more impressive. I, I watched it back and Buga won the tournament in three games which is crazy so booga just really did some crazy stuff booga's definitely that was one of the crazy I, people don't realize how impressive that was from booga i really i think i really don't think so my thing is just like does it matter if you know he wasn't there in a few end games if he played the format right like isn't it all about playing the format right in a sense doesn't even matter if you're surviving game after game does that not like give him the title of respect of possibly being the best player getting 12 and validating him on an international scale? I mean, I, I don't think you can, if, you, if you're not in any, like, I don't think anybody's, I don't like comparing players internationally before LAN events. Like, I think it's really yeah. hard to. I mean, I watch regions play, but that's all you can really do. Like, you can't actually see what they're going to do. It's hard to explain, but regions are really hard to, like, gauge and compare with each other. The only way that you can compare them is if you watch a lot of that region. And yep. some things are not as good in other regions. Like on NA, fighting is probably a bit worse. On EU, game knowledge is probably a little bit worse. And that's because NA's had scrims for a lot longer. But um, yeah, it, it's really hard to compare regions internationally. Like, I My, think people try to do too much. Here's a shift. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you for the most part, but it is fun to, you know, kind of have these, you know, questions about, oh, is it is it possible that Epic Whale is the better, is one of the best players in the world? Right, those types of questions because we do have people who are get put up on this pedestal, like Benji, like Savage, like Zayt, like Aqua. That people are always like, "These, this is the best player in the world." So it's unfair to never consider other regions um, simply because they're another region. Uh, it's still fun. In any case, my point, my question is more so: Is there any other team on any other region that can do this? Yeah, if they, if you put them on that day, if you put them in Brazil and you put them. With that POI. No, I'm not, I'm not asking about that region. Like, no, I'm asking, no. 
Is no. Zayt Saf and Stretch ever going to be able to do this? Is Booker no. Jamper and Avery ever going to be do, able to do this? Is maybe the OCE guys, Worthy, Jinx, and Alec ever going to be able to do this? No. Or is this a fluke and only happen, only possible on Brazil? I, I'm not sure. I think this was really hard because, I mean, you're watching the footage right now. Nobody's shooting at them. So I guess it's pretty hard. They didn't even get shot at on height for some reason. That was really weird. <laughs> but like, I don't know what's going on there. But... It, I, I don't think you can do this on any other region. Maybe, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think you can because maybe, maybe. I, I'm not too sure. But what if, what if Zayt was uncontested at Doom's Domain? Do you he think might he be able be to. He, he might. You know, he wouldn't be able to. Zayt, Zayt has a lot of things that he does that are really punishable. But, like, I don't think he'd be able to do it. No, I don't think so. Fo follow up question. Partly because he's running you... around with no bats. Are you watching this? He's running around with no mats. Well, the entire dying. lobby's already dead. The entire lobby's no, already dead. No. Are you watching this? Like, what do you mean? There's one trio left, yeah. bro. There, it's I don't this, this happens in every region. It, he's been doing it for four minutes straight, ball or child. <laughs> he's been doing it for four minutes straight. Like, what are you saying? No, I watched. I watched some pretty punishable stuff. Like, I watched some of the vod backs, and there's like, you know, they rotate and not get <laughs> shot at all. Like three back-to-back -back games, look. crash pads in the air. It's just like meta differentials, but Bala, you have like a follow-up question? Yeah, my, my follow-up question is, okay, nobody can do 11 out of 12 wins, but what would be a comparable performance to this on the scale of other regions, right? So There was one. In Middle okay. East, I think in Season X. Oh, that was semis. For trios. Oh, season X. Yeah, like all the way back when, I think it was like three out of six wins almost. Like, Or that's the other thing, right? This is one of the first times we're getting to see like a team play 12 games in this format mm -hmm. together, right? Yeah. How do you quantify 11 out of 12 in six games? Is it five out of six? Is it four out of six? What would the number be? Six out of six. It would be six out of six? It'd have to be perfect? I think so. Really? Yeah, I no, think so. I think it'd be five out of six because they, they're not perfect. So you don't have to hold them like perfect six out of six. Well, they were six out of, or they were five out of five on the first day. Yeah. If they went seven out of seven, was it? Before they lost their first game? Yeah, I, don't know. I, I, think. I think six out of six is. I would say five out of six with a top placement in the sixth game, like a top five, would be equivalent yeah. to what these guys okay, did. Sure. And sure. honestly, no one's done that. The only regions I see where that's possible is OCE. So, but right now, but that's maybe question. like okay, what what say? Okay, let's let's just because we're all in a. What people. about Kaizu though in season? Like 11. right now, that was though, three right? wins in a row. He, season three, that was three wins, three wins in a row. That was nasty, man. That's in grand finals too. Yeah, that was grand we finals. Also have to, we also have to frame this, by the way. Like this is eleven out of twelve wins in one of the random qualifying qualifiers. Qualifiers, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means much in Brazil at all. I don't know if all the top teams are qualifying every single week, no matter what. Anyways, but like OCE does. Bucky and I, I, season X, nah. They they didn't. They got one hundred twenty six points and then got last place in finals. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying just I, for I, qualifiers. Like I'm thinking, yeah, like right. Like, in the past, there's a lot of teams we can name. But right now, let's talk about it. You were about to say, Bala, any East, can any team do it? I mean, one had an opportunity, um, and they didn't. They didn't even win. And that's at yeah. Starks via Buga, right? That is the best pedestal you can give past Dooms. Um, so I would say any East is a no right now. By the way, like, I, I, I'm kind of moving away from that. I, I, other question is, like, why was Booga Jamper and Avery? Do I, I I actually don't understand why they're not doing way better. I don't get it. I, I mean, just Cal straight up don't get it. <laughs> it's we we were talking about surge routes. There's not much of an issue at Starks, I don't think. If you talk about surge routes in general and you put Booga's name into it, I mean the man kind of developed that meta of getting into center, building up, and going for shots far and fast, right? Ooh, like what? That was the first notable person that I can remember. I'm not sure if you developed it, but like popularize the fact that you should rotate to hills at the center of the map to get surge first. I, yeah, no. I, I think that in squads, there was definitely a, an element of like, wow, this is crazy, like the way that he's doing because he did get crazy splits, but I, I don't think that he was like the popular, right? Okay, like, all right. Well, I, in my mind, I guess I'm a fanboy, yeah, but yeah, maybe. Um, like, they were still doing that. They were still doing that many times. I think the biggest prop for me, it's like a team that is that stacked on shockwaves and is never on height. I think that's the problem. I think that's a problem. I mean, if we're talking about how Brazil went, I think one thing, and you know, versus other regions, 
The other issue is, is that they're not the only people that have six shockwaves and are ready to go for height or 12. Like Slurpee's uncontested. There's people in Craggy who are uncontested walking around the map. Dirty has people not really having that much of an issue making it out of spawn in some games. Like, there's a lot of other outliers that are stronger comparatively, right? No, that might not let. Shockwaves. You think Slurpee's not getting shockwaves? They're not getting as no, many not. Stark. Stark. So Stark has guaranteed bouncer or uh, uh, guaranteed crash pads or uh, shockwaves. Bouncers. Yeah. Bouncers. Yeah. They've guaranteed from their Stark crates. That's why. That's why they always get so many because they've guaranteed. I think six. But is it six? Six spawns. I think. I don't, I don't know. know what it is. It's six. I think it's six spawns. That's why. I Slurpee. I, I remember Creo specifically. Telling me like we've only yeah. gotten two shockwaves in like the last three games or something like that or four games, so they they're struggling too, uh, but they still managed to to make it work. It might be ah. because of gauntlets, right? Like what? that's a big thing. What? No, because the the dooms team wasn't a factor in any. Yeah, like no, at all. Just, okay, I'm not saying the dooms team specifically, but there were at least I would say five there to six games, games this yeah. weekend where the gauntlets were a driving factor as to why no one with shockwaves could really overtake height. Because there was literally one person, different teams, um, built way, way up high, shooting down as insurance. I, I only think that like the there was the one, it was the couple cases. Clicks, Bizzle, and Illus, they picked up or they picked up Zate like three times. Yeah. And and that those games all of a sudden Dooms was a factor. But the rest of them, I don't think that there was. It's a big sweaty. Factor. Sweaty's a lot of loot. Yeah. And Maybe. they they punish Zate for overpeaking. Oh, you know what else it was? It was Zach Smack and Calc always dead going in the freaking <laughs> end game and they're not contesting height. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a couple teams in NA East, right? Calc, like there's only a couple teams that are going for height. You, Zay, Staff, and Stretch, Bizzle, Clicks, and Illist, Creo, Bucking, and Kanata. Yeah. Well, okay. there's one team that fights for low ground. <laughs> I don't know why, why Av... Oh, Av, I think Av, Rook, Shark, and Knight, yeah. they had trouble getting surged because they fight for low ground it's really weird their play style is weird it works they though. just play low ground constantly they fight, like no no they like fight without... for low ground it's weird what do you mean fight for low ground like if a team is crash padding in instead of going up they'll fight for low ground it's weird i don't know how to explain it it's really weird i think it's just the way that av plays in general mm -hmm. it's very low ground oriented it's only like the first or the bottom two layers um but like we're seeing that i think a little bit more across the board there's some people who are trying to copy that flow of avs i feel like chat was doing it um and, and like you know both those guys learned it together and are both trying to do it a lot of the times now forever forever mm -hmm. chap has always loved low ground like even back to skirmish days but in any case yeah all right i think i'm ready to on to the next one yeah 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 <laughs> On the topic of Chap, it's a tweet from Chap. I'm not saying it started off the entire, uh, not fiery controversy over everything, oh, but yes. just 12 game finals. We can now delve into it a bit more. Um, I'll keep my thoughts for last. Bala, we'll start off with you. What were your thoughts this weekend or just in general about 12 games? Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it on, on the screen right there, my response to Chap. I, I, I really enjoyed them. I know that people don't necessarily enjoy them and i've given my thoughts on what i think about them being in the qualifiers uh, but i still had fun watching this weekend i think my fun is going to go down drastically over the next two because that's just how fncs works um and it'll come back during the grand finals but i don't think that the issue of what chap is saying has anything to do with 12 games and i think that people who generally are attacking i know calc's about to attack 12 games in general i think that it's not a problem of 12 games it's just when we execute them and what we execute them in because we've only had them twice once in fncs solo invitational and we've also had a day a two-day format in katowice katowice was really good fncs solo invitational i was bored out of my mind what do you mean really good katowice that two-day format was so bad bala are you mm. forgetting what happened at katowice and why Zexer i i am not i am not not that at all so I awful. Actually... that was awful what do you mean that was good <laughs> that was one i didn't of the say that exactly. that was good the I worst just team think in the that... tournament landed on them on Viking. Like they contested okay. Viking. So because of that one fact, the two-day formats are bad. Yes. Yes. They aren't good. Because not only is it really anticlimactic and boring, it like one game doesn't feel like it changes anything. 
but people just grief. They grief. I think it does. Bucky Curry and Kanata won in one game. They were literally behind the entire time, and then they come back and win in the final game. That shit is not. That's the opposite of anticlimactic to me. Like that is the complete opposite of anticlimactic. Playing it felt really anticlimactic. I don't. I don't know. Watching it definitely didn't feel that great either. Yeah, that that's good. I actually hearing that makes me. Yeah, I, I bet you that a lot of the teams felt that it was anticlimactic because they didn't have an impact later on, and that that to me is the biggest hurdle that two day formats need to overcome, um, especially in a format like this. Replacement is so lovely. You did you did you even watch <laughs> Fortnite resum? Do you? Watch the game at all? They got contested all six Come games. <laughs> here's here's my little analogy for the day in terms of twelve game formats. Um, to me, we have a really really nice shiny sedan, right? Um, that has like it, it's shiny because we have enough juice in this shine can uh, to shine it for six games worth of juice, right? So it's it's a whole a, a, an even split around the whole car. It's very shiny. I'm watching six game formats. Everything's shining all the time, right? The magic's there. For me, for 12 game, it feels like we're not upping the shine, but we're upping the size of the car or like the maintenance of the car in a sense. And we're spreading that shine around. Like we get some of those magical moments like Bucky Kuro Kanata coming up all the way at that final 12th game. But like, mm -hmm. what is the 10th game? What is the ninth game looking like, right? There's no shine there. That magic for me on Saturday is there a lot when we start and we end the day. But like, I just I, feel like some of the times that I don't shine. Know. I don't know. I, really? I, to be honest, yeah, no, that shine. Because it's all a buildup, man. I feel like in 16 formats, we have no buildup. We just have a freaking final final game that decides it all. Whereas in a 12-game in a, in a format, yeah. I was actually able to, to follow, you know, Bucky, Creo, and Kanata coming back. They were staying tight. And then all of a sudden, they're making it a 12-game. It's a 12-game gap. It widens a little bit. It shortens a, a, a lot of it. Back in ESO Katowice, same thing. Zayn, Sav, and Stretch. All of a sudden, in the last... Sorry, not... Zayn and Sav. It was, it was freaking <laughs> duos. Zayn and Sav, in the final four games, had one of the most ridiculous runs to push themselves way up and make it so that nobody had another chance. Nobody had another chance after their back-to-back -back wins. And it was the I'm... Rift play, and it was the Polar mm. Pleak crazy-ass game, and that solidified the tournament. Next game, they go on to L Dance on the, on the Hill. And to me, that was also the opposite of anticlimactic even though the last game it was all said and done it was still really fun to watch i just think zexter and them got griefed and it would have been a, a lot better of a tourney to watch if zexter didn't get griefed <laughs> and zayt and saf were sure. fighting with zexter and also i, th I think that would have been cool too 100 well, uh, but you, you also have opens? to remember that Ze what what go i you also have to remember that Ze zexter and Vinny did like sure they were getting contested all of a sudden but they were still making end games they were still kind of making it interesting. They lost the lead because they were getting contested. And they also died. What was it? One, one out of three games, or I think they only died once. Or tw oh no, no, they got sniped the other game from leaving uh, Viking Hill early. In any case, that specific storyline, sure, it might have been a lot closer. If Zexro and Vinny were there in the actual finals standings, but they were still they were still battling. They were still in the lobby. Uh, they were still hanging. Yeah, but they, had, they still got third place. Vi they, had ha they had half of Viking. You my my with... point is that it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not like they disappeared because they were getting contested. They were still there in the same lobby as Zayn Saf. They definitely did disappear. Have you ever tried playing the game with Viking loot contested? I, I used to drop Viking yeah, very much. Contested Viking. Yeah, yeah, then, you, then, you understand, then you understand how bad that is. They're basically they were regardless of the of, of the personal anecdote moment for me when it comes to 12 game finals I feel like we're doing things right, especially with the two days, right? I just feel like the car can be a bit smaller. I'm talking so, so about what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting two day finals. I like 12 games might be a bit too hefty, right? 10 games okay. Cutting that down a little bit that way. There's still build up. There's still a day break. There's still things going on um, but like, you know having a good game can matter more because there's less of a chance for you guys to you know get trumped over by just playing 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 and playing which is a good storyline yeah. in its own right yeah but you got to think about the balance of the player experience of your experience um and at the same time we can have that whole build up it's yeah. a compromise on both ends um i, I like just that. feel like I, I also like the idea that we had an elite cup i don't know how you felt about it calc but deleting teams who are in the bottom after day one for example uh, they yeah. didn't do like the entire 
But I, I think that's a great idea. It makes the next day even more competitive. There's a storyline. It's like, sure. this team's gone. They're eliminated. And now, all of a sudden, there's not that day two shift where the bottom place team is all of a sudden contesting the top place team. I do like that idea, Bola. I think it's a great idea. I just think that finals, uh, part of the reason why I feel like, as a from a player standpoint, it's super anticlimactic is because you're forgetting. What we're doing is we're playing opens on one day. That's yes. all we're doing. Yes. And then we play semis. And then finals. We can all agree that that is terrible. It's so and stupid. and the better if you bring up Chap's tweet again, Robbie. Actually, like literally his suggestion, I think everybody agrees with. And again, I don't feel like we're attacking necessarily the right thing in terms of being boring and anticlimactic. I think this long ass buildup that is irrelevant. Opens and semis are completely irrelevant. Completely. And all of a sudden, we're playing two days of, of finals. I think that's the the bigger issue, rather. And I like the idea here, where okay, maybe not necessarily Saturday Saturday equals semis with twenty games and one hour breaks. Eh, it's okay, uh, but why not just add another stage, for example? That that one that people have been floating around forever. If they want to keep it semis, you know, a thousand to thirty three. Sure, I like Chap's idea, but in any case, needs more for that qualifying range, and I'd rather see that than twelve game finals. Man, what if like, and this is coming out of completely past right field, there was, we just got opens like out of the way at the beginning of the month. I know yes. I think you've suggested before as well, Bala, but like, yes. what if we literally just had four days of opens or something yeah. or some, some crazy type beat and that way for the rest of the month, we never have to play opens again. Mm. Maybe we, we'd start like, you know, I don't know how you'd balance semis versus, um, you know, round three slash finals, but just having more of like, you know, I keep thinking back to the hotel at World Cup and the vibes there where it wasn't about, you know, I, I, I could walk up and talk to people about like what they're going to expect in the tournament, not what they're going to expect in opens and semis. Like we don't have to talk about that at all, but it was like yep. people conditioning job spots. Like you're, you're walking beside the people, you know, you're going to fight. Like there's no questions. It's just about <laughs> what am I, what is my answer going to look like? Like that type of vibe, I feel like sometimes might be missing from Fortnite or mm -hmm. like we only get it for like three hours in the morning yep. of like Saturday. So just more of that, where it's like a week worth of like, um, the like issue that week. Is that the whole point of FNCS is to drive player base. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily still there, given the fact that we're not seeing cash cup levels participation in FNCS, but all of a sudden that's gone. Um, when you only have opens on one or two weekends, but in my mind, that's 100% the best thing that you can do for a fun to watch and fun to play competitive tournament. And then like on the point of like what you said before too, like, you know, FNCS sometimes losing its drive in the second, third week. I would say the best week past, like, week one and grand finals of FNCS is that kind of gap between the week three qual, like the last one, and the grand finals coming up. Heats, discords, people fighting for their spots, actual base yeah. drama rather than random, you know, my drop, my trio split, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, it's base stuff, Which has stuff, no man. basis like, in, in any sort yeah. of reality at all. Yeah. It's just like, oh, well... They might not qual, so I might have an uncontested drop. Yeah, like, you know, like really boring that here. stuff is just really nice. And like, if we could extend that week into a month, I would just want to see what that looks like. Pass that though. We talked a lot about formats. We talked a lot about you know games results. This is a little bit more also about results, but a player of the future possibly. Um, I'm moving on to the topic of Reet, my friends. Uh, been a hot topic for the past day. Been a hot topic for the past week as well. This man is like the second coming of Unknown Army. Day I say his name might be the Known Militia. Uh, try to put that 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 Jenga together. You know what I'm saying? Um, talk of the town, Cal. Player's perspective. What are your thoughts on the extra reach? Have you ever noticed how every time there's a guy who W keys people and wins every fight, it's always a controller player? I knew that was coming right off the freaking bat. <laughs> <laughs> But controller now, Cal, like back in the day, I could get the hate. It doesn't you know, matter, I... Shia. I'm telling you right now, in a year or two years, controller is going to be the dominating input and keyboard players won't be able to compete because everybody's going to play like Reet. And you can't play like Reet on keyboard because you don't have 360 movement. You don't have consistent aim. Well, you have consistent aim, but you don't have aim assist. And aim assist, no I'm going to have to stop you right there, sir. I'm going to have to stop you right there in this drive because you started it cor incorrectly. You took a wrong turn. You said everyone's going to be able to play right, like Reed. Yes. I is. absolutely disagree. Yes. I have, like, you need a certain type of personality and a certain type of headspace to be able to have the confidence to do what he does. There's no way someone can just play like Reed. Because I know there's a lot of people who have the capability to right now, 
but they don't have the personality or like the the setup to be able to like from a physiological standpoint child i'm telling you right now that it doesn't matter if they think that they're the best if they think that they can key everything if you're fighting a controller player who can run into your box and run circles around you and you can't do anything about it while perfectly tracking you you're fucked you can't Dude, do anything about i'm it. just saying that they're rare and they're not going to become common yes they will i'm they're sorry they're going to become common they're going to become common Dude, this is the this is like the idea of that taken to perfection. You're saying everyone's gonna get to perfection. I just don't see that as possible. No, 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 no. There's people who are so capable right now in other departments, Calc, in terms of like end game game sense, in terms of like just playing the game, Reed who have not perfect, got to the most basic levels. Like I'm not saying reach perfect, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Eventually, people are gonna be able to play like him on controller. Eventually, people are gonna realize how busted controller movement is. They're gonna learn things, and controller is gonna be better. I mean, maybe I'm giving controller players too much credit here, but it, I mean, it's just better. It, I, it's better to play on controller than it is to play on keyboard. And it's gonna, yeah, you're gonna start seeing that a lot more in the future. I, I don't know. I feel like we're actually not seeing as many reads, as many unknown armies right now. Uh, and obviously there's reasons for that, but back when unknown was playing, all of a sudden we were seeing a lot of many unknowns, variations on that, people trying and getting closer to where that was. But now I don't, I don't really see that. You have Reet, and you have all the other controller players. You have Coop, whatever, everybody else, Illis. Like these guys are fragging, but they're not Reet. And the difference between the two is that they're playing more of a smart game, more of a complete game, more of a, you know, a competitive Fortnite winning mentality type game. Does that make sense? Uh, your chat's telling me to just switch if controller's so good. Okay, ignore the chat. I don't I, give I a crap really about what the chat That's is really funny, though. Is that not funny? Just switch, bro. Lol. <laughs> just switch. I, I, always, I always... I don't want this to be a controller debate, so I'm not going to bring up the entire, like, switching or whatever. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about, about Reed himself, right? Because to me, okay. I think Shia's on to something. Is... You're saying it's not possible to do what he does on keyboard and mouse. It's not. He said what? it multiple times. What? Yeah. Who said it? Reed. Reed? Yeah. So is that because of the 360 movement? Yeah. And and what is it about 360 movement that's making him so good? Because to me, I'm it's seeing... not Because he utilizes it more than anybody else. He utilizes aim assist 360 movement and the benefits of controller more than any other controller player. That's why. He's also very good at piece control. He knows how to use his movement and he knows where to position his crosshair. He just knows all that stuff, and he knows how to do it better than other controller players. I mean, uh, you can't do what he does how, on keyboard. How come, how come there are no keyboard and mouse players, regardless of 360 movement and stuff like that, who are utilizing movement to its greatest potential, who are you utilizing pre-aim to its greatest... No, you, of course you no, can't. No, we can't use movement to... Of course you can. Bro, it is... Bala, you don't understand. You can't move like a controller player. You can't. I think well, I'm not saying move like a controller player. I'm saying move to your greatest potential as a keyboard and mouse player. Yes, we are trying, but you won't be able to do it as well as Reed because Reed's movement is way better. You can. So, okay, I guess if you just say you can't get as good as Reed, and we're trying to get as good as whatever on on keyboard and mouse, my, my, my I just don't see a player like that on keyboard and mouse at all. Yes. No good There's movement. The, you can't move the only keyboard. person I actually see it who's doing that is unknown when he plays keyboard and mouse. It's and Mitra. What? It's to that, and Benji. Yeah, it, it, it's to the fact that even though it's the input, it's got to be like this is primarily because of the player. I I, agree I, I would that. say not the input. The input yeah, 100%. is a, is hundred percent a strong weapon, but I think that the point that Ball was trying to like make slash ask to you, Calc, was like. Who is like to the max potential of keyboard and mouse, right? Screw controller. Take take read out of your, out of your mind, right? Who is the person who's doing the best in terms of box fighting and 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 pushing kids and W King on M and K mouse and keyboard? Like who is it? Um. Well, nobody touches Illist or Reed. That's just how it is. Like I I don't I can't say anybody else. I know I know I know no one's close, but who's 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 at the top in terms of mouse and keyboard, right? Like examples. Uh probably Kanata, Clicks, Booga, people like that. True. Like Stretch. Is, can that compete slash compare is like the follow up to that? No. No. 
at all. I mean, we kind of no. we kind of saw it yeah. in the box fight tournament yesterday. No. <laughs> two controller <laughs> players won a two v two tournament. Do you know why, Shia? Because why? they use their movement better than anybody else. You don't understand how good three sixty movement is. You just don't understand. I'm just like, saying that you have to be at a certain level personally to be able to utilize that movement. I'm not it's saying not like... that he's not. I'm not saying that he's not. Reed's really no, good. No, no. I'm talking really about good. your point that like everyone is going to be at this. It's going to be common. Yes, I will. just don't think that's true. I don't think that there's enough. Like it's that easy to pick up on even over time. Like I'm sorry. I I, I agree with Cal. With Cal, like, if if we're if I'm gonna try to drop all pretense of trying to keep this not input related, yeah, I I, I agree with Cal. Everything is replicable. Everything. Ta like, I'm sure he might have a different swagger right now, but give it six months. Give it six months, and all of a sudden, yeah, especially as Reed is getting a different treatment in the pro community right now than Unknown did back when he was starting off, and Reed. Is going to be more visible right now than anybody was because there's a lot more eyes on the game right now for whatever reason, and specifically on players like Reed. I think that there are going to be people who are utilizing everything that they have to the fullest exactly like Reed, and they'll mm -hmm. bring even more. Yep. That evolution is going to continue. That's scary. Do Reed does on controllers. So I'm telling you, controller players are going to be the best players. It's going to happen. I don't know when. But probably by next World Cup, controller players are going to be dominant. It's just what's going to happen. Then like, why not it, switch, bro? Because I, I don't want to switch. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I've never played on a controller in my entire life. People don't understand. I've never touched a controller in my entire life. I haven't touched a controller in four years. Why would I switch? Like, it doesn't make any sense. To to be the best, I don't know. But No, but, but genuine question. Don't you think that you should actually try to know what it is like to be on controller? What do you mean? Like to know what the 360 movement is like. No, we know how we. No, I know. I know how they play, and I know what it's like. But it, no, you can't. No, you can't replicate I, I don't it. think. I don't think that you do if you've never touched yes, the controller. Yes, you do. You you can't replicate it. You can't. You can. It's try not about to. replicating. It's also about learning what the other, eh, what the other input is. They just move playing faster. Like, so that you could play different and counter it, and play differently. That's true, but they move faster. I, I know people who do play on controller bits for fun, but no, controller players just move faster. They move quicker. They change directions faster than keyboard and mouse players. And it, it, I don't I don't know. Like, 360 movement, aim assist is just, it's going to make controller players better. Nothing anybody can do about it because, you know, whatever. But they're just going to be the better players. It's going to happen. Like, I don't know. Well, we'll see who's I, right in time, I guess. Like, you have a final I, thought on I that? Have, well, yeah, not, not a bar, but yeah. just one more question about Reed. And I'll post, I think, mostly to you, Shai. Do you think that Reet would drop a third place without Arab and Azir? Oh, actually, that's not even a final question. Let's actually talk about that for a sec. <laughs> no, man. I feel like it is the... And Arab's my friend. A lot of the coaches that I have are... are There's not a shot at those people personally, personally, right? I don't, like... I think coaching is dirty. I think it is so unfair, personally. Like... It's because I, I also come from like a, a little bit of a background from fighting games and it would actually be like career suicide if you would do that at every event. Like no one would like you. It's, it's not even allowed to have someone in your ear in like a solo event telling you the next possible play in one form of your gameplay. Like how is that like solos? I don't like it either. I don't know why Epic ever said that that's allowed. I really don't like it's, it. It's not, even, it's not even on that side of if it's allowed or not. I just personally be the whole idea of it for me. Is like, and I, I I've done it at some times too, right? Because you know, it's you, you got you gotta get the experience, and like you're not doing anything. Like it's really easy to do, which is the other thing. But it's like, man, it is actually so unfair. Like when you think about it, if you're playing by yourself, and there's someone else with like Arab in their ear, if Clicks is playing with Bizzle in his ear, like at that point, you you are like, like anime reference here, but you're like a complete Genin facing like a Hokage for no reason. Like it's, it's actually like, like you're a soldier facing someone who has like 14 years of experience in the battlefield in a place that's like literally just meant for soldiers. Like it's I, just I like, yeah, I get it. There's like an invisible stand behind someone, man, that you don't see. Like, okay. I don't like it. So, I, I don't like it. I, I think we've, I think other people, I don't know. I, I don't know if you've even talked about this on Fantasia, but in any case, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Does Reed 
still plays third without Arab in his ear. Can he plays third without Arab in his ear? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't like it. I, I don't know if you like it, but I don't think I don't know why they ever said that like that's allowed. I don't think it should be allowed. It's it's solo tournament. I don't get it. He also plays third during the FNCS solo invitational. Did he have a coach? And I'm pretty sure he had Bizzle in his ear. That's that's what I saw. In any case. I don't think that Reet will have these same performances over and over again outside of opens and semifinals without a coach. And I think that's an I think that's a big gap in his gameplay. And that's why I put people like Coop and Illis still above him. Do you agree with that? I don't Coop agree and with that. Still above I think him? I think Reet can do very well in game and he knows what he's doing in game uh, sure. without a coach. But I do think yes. Illist and Illist and Reed are definitely the two controller players. I think Fury is too that are above the rest, like fighting wise and stuff like that. They know what they're doing. Also, yep. um I think on EU you have a lot of controller players. I think EU controller players are definitely a lot better than NA controller players though. Really? I mean I think I think there's a lot more EU controller mm, maybe not. CR I think that, that I think that since since duos FNCS, we've kind of lost the idea of EU controller players being really, really good. So there was Wolfies, there's CRR, there's Lechi, and since those guys, now there's definitely a few all around. There's um, Amplify, for example, and a couple on that that trio. But for the most part, they're not they're not doing like what Coop is doing. They're not yeah, doing what Yeah, I feel like Gillis Wolfies, Lechi, and CRR are the good ones. Maybe yeah. Um... There's Hard Find too. Yep. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I feel like Coop, um, Illist, and Furious, and Reet are definitely the best controller players. There's some other good ones on West. What, who else? Um, I can't think. Who, who else Wait, on West? Jacob. Well, yeah, maybe Jacob. Uh, they're really Thomas. good. Thomas. Thomas is yeah, good. Yeah, there's definitely some really good West controllers. Oh, Hoofish, she's doing and pretty it, good too. Hoofish, yeah. Yeah, but my, I guess my point was, I don't think that Reet has the, like, obviously he can do it in Endgame. He just doesn't have the ability to do it consistently because he's too confident. That's what unknown. That's what costed unknown many, many times in his prime was that he was too Bro, confident. Reed isn't unknown. You don't understand unknown. I know he's not. He's Bro, a different level. You gotta understand something. This meant unknown. I asked him, "What are you doing for World Cup?" Yeah, bro. I'm just a W key and everyone, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Good luck with that. You're really gonna it do really well like that. though, in some cases, watching grand finals with Reed, even with Arab in his ear. Nah, bro. That, that's the problem. That's the problem I have with Reed's play style. And I don't, until he fixes that, I'm not putting him up there with, with Illist, with Coop, with Furious. And with some of the EU guys, too. Outside of fighting ability, outside of the most brilliant things I've ever seen watching somebody play the game in W King. I just don't know if I can put him up. There. I think Reed's really. Anyway. Why don't you? I mean, he's so good though. I don't. Yeah, he's good. I'm, it's just a hot might, take. I mean, he might not be that good any of He's a West player, but he's really good. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. I don't know if we have Shao back. Probably not. In any case, uh, I think very close to our final topic. We're running out of time here. Sure, are you here? Um, we have a couple more player signings. Um, the first one, I don't know if you pulled up either of these. Let's talk about G2 getting back involved in Fortnite with the signing of Coop, which is very topical. They just announced him yesterday. Kalk, you had some words about the way that they announced him. I personally thought that it was kind of weird. Uh, I think Coop's announcement was okay. I just don't think it was like... I feel like NRG and BBG are definitely in a league of their own with announcement mm -hmm. videos. I really think so. I, I think BBG and NRG just set the bar. G2, I mean, they did their own thing, but they added five seconds to a video that was already like done. So, I mean, it was okay, but they could have done a lot better. I'm sure that they'll have content with Coop in the future though. Yeah. In the future. So I don't know, we'll see. G2, uh, to me, like nobody knows who G2, I was actually surprised actually reading the, reading the responses to this, reading, you know, just the general Fortnite reception to G2 signing a player. It was mostly like, people don't understand. And I think that's where a lot of people found the announcement a little weird was because G2 is a meme, is a meme team. That's what they do. They just, they don't necessarily care. It's all weird stuff constantly and it's hilarious. And that's why we like G2, but 
it's like not really introducing themselves to the Fortnite scene in a, in a level that I guess BBG introduced you guys. I just think at. G2 should have, uh, well, I, I think Cube might not have as big of a personality though. It's like, I mean, mm-hmm. he does. I don't know. They could have utilized it a lot better. They also only signed one player. They don't have any yep. other signings, which is really weird to me. I don't know why they didn't sign a full roster. Maybe it's because they don't like the other free agents right now. But um, they could sign people like A Corner, people like that. So I don't know. Do you, so do you think that starting with Coop is a solid place? I think I think Coop it's a pretty back good to place back. To start. Yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty decent. Nice. Okay. I, just think a lot I don't of really have much just because their agency. I mean, like I don't like what like. Cloud9 signed Frist because he's on Evolved. That's the only reason Frist got signed. I don't know. That's literally I, the maybe. only reason he got signed. I don't know what Cloud9's doing. That's really weird. I know players in the we, roster don't like that either. We've talked a lot about Cloud, I think, in the last two episodes because they signed multiple people and then Chap. And then we've talked about it both episodes. But, yeah, that's interesting. New facts. Um, but in any case, I don't really have much more to say about G2 Coop unless you know um but there's also tna signs haji they signed day and they signed miro and all of a sudden this team has a lot of comp players now they have till they have reverse dk they have these guys too um and they have a full tna roster in trios as well that to me is very interesting reverse dk day and miro i think uh, is, that DK team... is a good a good pickup Mir- or i don't know about miro but day's a decent pickup um i don't know Haji, I'm not sure about that. I mean, they I guess they got what players they could get, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It it it's a weird branding. It's a really weird branding. I, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I, I still think I actually think next episode I'm gonna look into maybe talking to one of the guys and, and bringing them on just to talk about the team in general. Um because I, I, I still am confused, but this these pickups, the way that these guys are playing the way that these guys are talking about TNA and the way that they keep coming up in the news is also they're doing well. They're doing very well. Um, all right. Last topic. DreamHack NA East is tonight. Uh, you're playing. You, you made semis, right? Come on, please. Please say you made semis. Bala. I... <laughs> Bala. Bala. <laughs> what happened, Cal? So, you used to be the guy that no, would qualify no, no, no. for everything. I, I do qualify for everything, Bala. But I had a particularly bad day. I don't know how to explain it, Bala. Um, have you ever had an off day? Yes, many times. Okay. so I have off days literally I'll, every day. I'll actually. do a comparison. Yeah. So back in World Cup, I qualified for every single week, right? It was top 1,500. I qualified uh-huh. for every single week. It's different now because I guess I had the worst off day I've ever had. I had a really bad day. I don't know why. I woke up. I couldn't think my brain was foggy. I couldn't see. It was like I had a blind spot in my eye, Bala. Do you ever had a blind spot, Bala? No. Okay, well, I had that's a blind not good. spot. I had a headache. I don't think that that sounds really bad. I had a headache and I couldn't I couldn't see out of part of my eye. And then I just played really bad too. So I couldn't see out of part of my eye. I played really bad. So I didn't qualify. But I can't see out of part of my eye. What was I supposed to do? What is that, genetics? And my head hurt. I had a migraine? Okay, well, maybe I had a migraine. I don't know. I couldn't play the I couldn't play the video game, Bala. What, what am I supposed to say? Okay. What, what okay. do you want me to do? Let, let's let's talk about Dream... Hey, he's back. Shia, welcome back. Hello, Let, Shia. Let's talk about DreamHack then. Regardless of whether you call it out, unfortunate. Just go next, I guess. Feels like we have a DreamHack every week. Feels like... It was literally two weeks ago that Mars. Why are they saying I'm capping? I how do you how do I make up that I can't see out of part of my eye? Out of part of my eye. Cap, why see. are you getting so offended about a chat room saying that you can't? Because like... I don't. I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. I couldn't <laughs> see. Okay, it's fine. You're not a liar. It's fine. You know, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Chaya, what are we what are we expecting tonight in DreamHack? It's going to be different, bro. It's going to be so different. The entire meta changed. I guarantee. Five minutes more DreamHack. New POI lands down. All right, let's get real out of fantasy land. It's gonna be the same hey, thing. Right, isn't there <laughs> right. some? Isn't there a new? Isn't there like rumors of a, a floating, like the 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 spawn island is all of a sudden gonna be on the actual island? Isn't there rumors like about that? Shouldn't it? It has evolved. We it? always Bro. have a floating island at some point. Yeah, but it's it has season evolved. four. It has oh, a vault. 
Yeah, it has a vault. Here we Even go. more drama, baby. Let's go. That's the first <laughs> first place my mind goes. But for me, bro, NA East. You know the one cool thing about DreamHack, like over time, um, mm -hmm. that we actually don't get to see, is like people actually developing their own legacies and stories. And like we we never get to see that at the beginning. We never get to see that second, third dream hack. But like, what is this now? The fourth one coming up? Maybe I can't do math and it's the third. Um, oh, you're right. But like, fourth. you know, the, these hotheads at the top, it actually matters to them if they want, you know, winning and 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 getting top five and being there. People like Coop, you know, um, people like who are coming uh, cross region from from EU to NA East. I just feel like I'm I'm on that vibe of like I'm actually interested to see who's going to win this time. If there's gonna be like a three P. If if. Shia. Cause, cause some, I'm not on that vibe sometimes, Calc, you know. But I actually care about it this time for some reason. But I just don't think there's gonna be that much of a difference from this dream hack, too. Listen to me, show. All right. Uh, you know, we want to hear my prediction. Yeah. I think the goat, the best player in the world right now, the OW is gonna this back coming. to back. Too. He's gonna back to back. He's gonna win by a hundred points. That's my prediction, show. I, I can look and get behind this. <laughs> okay i can i, I can low key get but behind this see this is good because like i just feel like dream act used to be like those papers in um i'm going way back to like high school moments or like middle school moments those random papers you would like shove in your desk that didn't really have a room anywhere you know what i mean like like in your life um that, that's what was happening month to month like okay another assignment like let me do it and put it to the side or whatever now okay, it's like so I have, why? I have a, why? now i have like an organized binder like it's i don't know why it was like that before we have fncs yes is that it's why it, it, i think it it's because be. we have fncs it has to be but I, I don't know i'm just i'm like i'm looking forward to these guys and who's going to win i did not feel that way in in september for mm -hmm. for nae specifically i feel like i always mm -hmm. cared about west because there's always been a fight at the top and they're all friends and they banter with each other and, and um, you've cast some more grand finals in west, and i've cast yeah. some more west grand finals baby <laughs> yes sir but i, I feel that way about eu because like the, there's a whole ton of fandom on eu but every time any east comes up there's like drama it's just that n n now it's just like all this drama or like whatever it is is in this one binder i can quantify it i can look at it and i can follow it like from from time to time i didn't feel that way before maybe it's because like fncs is a thing and now this is something completely different you know, in the past, it was like, we have a DreamHack solos. Now there's an FNCS solos. There's nothing really different about it. All the sheets look the same. It's all multiple choice. But FNCS to me is like a long answer. And DreamHack is like multiple choice now. Like, I see the difference. And I'm down to circle some Cs, baby. Like, let's get it done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can like, make some predictions for next year? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think we're going to have anything else this year? What about next year? What do you think, Show? My prediction for December for DreamHack is that it won't be solos. No. Bold prediction. No, it's gonna be so. Really? It's gonna be so. No. Really? Yeah, it's gonna be so. It's solos. gonna be so. Yeah. Man, I just have a feeling that they already they... said six months of solos, and people, the epic specifically doesn't change things like that. Yeah. Have you? Has there ever been a tournament that's changed what it's gonna be? Nope. Or not? Nope. Not even what it's gonna be, but even a format. Like, there's yep. literally been nothing changed about tournaments before after they've been announced. That's changed. Dude, what do you guys think? Do, this, do you think there's gonna be another FNCS this year? next year or do you think it's gonna get straight into world cup what do you think is gonna happen oh uh, not gonna go straight into world <laughs> cup i think world cup is going to be like maybe even 2022 who knows with the way the world is right yeah. or maybe late 2021 so. but um past that like for for dreamhack specifically next year i don't know man i feel like later this we're not gonna get in <sighs> i think uh, next year we might see some differences in yeah. dreamhack modes um i think so but we're still gonna have it month to month because What's the winter they're, looking like, they're wildly successful. What is the they're winter looking like? Successful. I don't is know. It maybe a console World Cup. I bet they will have a console World Cup. I feel like a winter world royale. No, they're or not something. gonna have a console World Cup. No, nah. they're gonna. Have a I, I, world I'm Cup. actually off of that wave. I thought that that was it was going in that direction, but I, I'm off of that wave. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, Guys, Bala is saying that he has inside information, and now that he doesn't work for Epic <laughs> once anymore, again, he's once going again, to leak. Wrong is person saying. to be saying that about. He's leaking. <laughs> he's leaking. I, uh, I would I would expect some type of you, like fun event for the winter. That's not an FNCS. Yes. Winter Royale. Yeah, winter, Royale. Yeah. Winter, Royale. winter Royale or something. Didn't we have both last year in December? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We, in we, in we, December. Then we, we have an FNCS in December and yeah, then a Winter Royale. Yep. In, no. Yeah, we yeah, did. We had squads finals in December. We had squads finals in December. Yes, we did. And then what? we had Winter Royale passed by that. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, it was because November we had that random DreamHack winter break. 
yeah yep. uh, thanksgiving where it was like we're not playing fncs yep. this weekend but i think this time it has to be either or there's not enough time for well, fncs, FNCS ends and in, yes there is their fncs ends in early november yeah but there has to be like a month of downtime in between okay, the season doesn't start until december yeah new there's season no starts FNCS. december yeah, there's no okay. no 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 new FNCS until January at least. But I feel like there'll be yeah. some fun type events. I don't know what they're gonna be, but all LTM, I've... bro, all Marvel <laughs> knockout. I'm done. Did, did you play Marvel knockout, Cuck? No. Why? Why would we? It's a for, it's for a free skin. What was the million dollar thing about then? Like it's what was November twenty first? November twenty first. Uh, okay, so that's what it is. Yeah, we're grinding okay. for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're not gonna do well if you didn't play knockout. I'm just saying you Why gotta not? start. You gotta start grinding now. No, see, but it's the same see, practice. EU we're, we're was over you guys. EU was playing freaking Marvel knockout left and right. All the pros were at the top of the leaderboard, and Bala, A was just playing pro scrims. Like what is pro we're scrims? Gonna, you know bro? what's funny, Bala? When like, there's a million EU? dollar tournament coming up, man. EU's using arcane gauntlets in Marvel Knockout, and NA's not even playing it, and they're not using the gauntlets, man. It's just two different metas. So the, I, EU has to be better, bro. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, a <true> <laughs> it's a true story, actually. Um, All right, I think that's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. Um, that's the end of the show, guys. Uh, final thoughts. Usually, I'm asked them, but I'll start off with Young Calc. Final thoughts about anything in general. What's Dreamhack looking like? Um, <laughs> shout out your socials. Say- Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for being on the Listen, show. There you go. Um, I, and thank you I for waking up see. early, man. Actually, my yeah. appreciation. Thanks for waking me up. I'm going to go back to sleep soon. Uh, but BBG is revealing their new logo at 5 p.m. today. So I just would like to say that. So, yes, I hope everybody's okay. excited. Nice. I'm, I literally don't care. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <I can. laughs> it's a BBG logo. Bala, I'm... shut up. Okay. <laughs> It, it's man. a logo, bro. It's a logo. If it was like, what else do you want me to say? Go follow my Twitter. I don't care. I want to go to sleep, Bala. Yeah, all right, yeah, dude. Thank you so much for for coming on. You saved our asses, um, guys. Please follow the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts now as well, and the VOD will be up on YouTube too. So, yeah. close it off. Yeah. Sure. Yo. With that being said. Yo, Fantasia, man. Crazy place. You never know what happens. Still working on taglines and stuff. Tune in next time. Shout out to your Baltic W. Come calculator. Yeet signing out. Yeet, yeet. Peace, peace.